All right, good day everyone, and welcome to something a little bit different as we get ready for our next Terra Invicta playthrough. I'm just taking a little bit of a break before I move into a series of additional guides, and one of the requests that has come through uh, from a very much appreciated follower of the channel is that I do a couple of episodes on Battle Brothers. I imagine if you watch this channel, a lot of you are already familiar with this title. Basically, it's a turn-based, hex-based strategy game in which you play a mercenary company in a sort of low fantasy, high fantasy, I think it's more of a low fantasy medieval setting. So pretty grim, dark, awesome, and it's focused on a mixture of um, hex-based combat, squad management, and also just being good at running the economics of a mercenary company. So you start the game by picking from a number of origin stories. Uh, this game has some weird ones. So for example, you can play as just one particularly hardy dude who's out there by themselves. You can play as a bunch of people who've just deserted from the army. Uh, Manhunters, which is basically a slavery start. You can play as a bunch of like sniff, uh, shifty cultists who like sacrifice people and stuff. Um, I think for me, what I care about is money. So I'm going to start as a trading caravan. So we were running a small trade caravan. Uh, we made most of our money into invest into trading goods. The roads have become dangerous. Brigands and greenskins lay in ambush. There's rumors of even worse things out there. So basically the advantage of this is that we get 10% better prices for everything we buy and sell. Uh, but we're not warriors. So we start with no renown and we gain renown at 66% of the normal rate. In other words, um, I like it because one of the least militarized starts. I find this one quite fun. Uh, peasant militia is very, very cool, where you're basically a bunch of filthy peasant militia who just basically decide that you may as well be a mercenary company. Um, a new company is sort of the default one. Oath Takers is one of the new ones they released in one of the expansions, where you have to like, uh, s like swear oaths um, and follow through. So, yeah, I don't know. I was going to do Trading Caravan. Should I do something different? I'm not sure. All right, so I've thought about it. Um, doing Oath Takers probably gives us two good starting equipment. I want to start with the most basic stuff. I've set up my name in advance. So this is these are going to be Perun's Axes. It's going to be my company. This is my flag. Um, late Game Crisis. Uh, at a certain point in the game, because you play around on the map, you build up your company, you get rich or not, or you die or you lose, like anything can happen. But if you survive long enough, eventually something dramatic will happen in the world. Um, there'll be a war between noble houses, or orcs will invade, or the undead will invade. Like something bad will happen, and if you manage to beat that major crisis, well then another one can happen after an extra period of time. We're going to play veteran, veteran. Um, I'm going to pick high starting funds, and then this map seed here. Um... Okay, how do I... I'll just type some random crap into there because I have no clue what that means. This is how the game generates the map, so let's just... I just bash the keyboard a little bit there. So veteran, veteran, we won't have Iron Man on, but I will tell people if I roll back. Um, I just don't want to risk an ongoing playthrough with only having one save file. That just seems like a bad idea. So as I said, you've got sort of a low fantasy setting. And basically what happens is we start as this, these guys, this trading caravan, we've just lost a bunch of people, and we're like, you know what, we should go and just be a mercenary company instead, because that's better than just being attacked all the time. These are my starting characters. I'll uh, take naming requests uh, from patrons first, and I have one special request once I get a decent character. Um, so what you see here are statistics, so things like health, fatigue, Melee attack, melee defense. The stars mean how quickly that stat might level up later on. I'll show you a level up screen when we get to it. So uh, Guido here has 56 melee skill and 93 fatigue. Currently one star and then a star in melee defense. He's okay. Uh, Ewald here is, again, like in the okay category, a little bit better at defense and easier to level his hit points but doesn't have as much fatigue and isn't as good at hitting people. Uh, Guido here has a dagger. Yuld here has a scimitar. One has a gambeson, one has padded leather. That's actually reasonably good so far as starting kit goes, but we have nowhere near enough people. Uh, so what do we need to do first? I think, well, we've got a bunch of trade goods, but what we really need, we need someone to sell our trade goods that we started the game with, and then we need more people. 
So I'm looking for these are all some these are all villages. And is that a city? No, that's a village too. The difference is um, things are cheaper in villages, uh, and cities are where you want to sell stuff. So I've started with some stuff that I want to sell. The flags are which like so the world is divided between different noble houses. The flag is which noble house controls that area. So it looks like we've got a house up to the north, house in the middle, house down south, and then some southern cities, some free cities down south that are each individually like a city state with their own rules and culture and norms. Um, all right, that's a city right there. So let's go to this city. You click on it, you walk, time is passing. Uh, as you're walking, you're paying people wages and you're eating your food. So there is a cost to operating. And this place has a modifier, ambush trade routes. Roads here are unsafe. All right, so prices are high for goods. So we should sell all the, st well, a lot of the stuff that we started the game with. So we'll sell these cloth rolls. We'll sell these ambush shards. They're worth 260, but I can sell them for 387 right now. We'll sell the dyes for almost 200 more than they're worth. Sell the furs, sell the salts. Take advantage of these people's misery because that's the name of the game. And then we won't really want to buy anything because prices are super high. Instead, what we want to have a quick look at is whether there are any people that are worth hiring. So for characters, what it gives you is a background, a little bit of a bio, uh, a trait, and then you can pay money to figure out what that trait is that affects the character, or you can just hire them regardless. So for example, Dieter the hero here, this guy's a hedge knight. Uh, he would cost more than twice the amount of money we currently have to hire, and then 44 bucks a day to keep around. He looks like an absolute badass, but you know, we can't afford it. We need people who are a little bit more disposable. People like these militiamen over here, um, so Sigurd uh, is a militiaman. Militiamen usually have a little bit of training, some kit. So he's got like a spear, a little buckler, some armor. Da -da -da. Lord sent the entire militia to almost certain doom. Sigurd realized he'd had, uh, better seek something better if he wanted to live. He took his modest skill set into the field of mercenaries. Um, now, he would cost about a third of our money, and I don't want to spend a third of our money on each of these people. Like, I want to be able to build a bit of a bigger company, but one one militiaman might not be a problem. So maybe I try... Maybe I try Sigurd out. So he's quick and an optimist. Um, he's pretty good. I'm going to hire him. And then what I'm going to do, instead of taking some missions here, is go to a little village here try and hire some farm boys and try and take our first mission. Let's have a look at Sigurd. He doesn't have a helmet. He starts, he doesn't have a star in melee skills, he starts with very good melee skills. 61 is excellent. Uh, low health, but stars, good fatigue and two stars. And very, he's got good starting stats. And then at level up, here's how leveling up works. Uh, you get three points, you can put uh, pick three stats to level up, and the number is rolled randomly each time, is how many points if you put points into that stat right now. So I've only got one for melee skill or melee defense, for example, so probably not very efficient to do that on this level up. So instead, I might want to do things that I've rolled well on. So for example, I've rolled well on fatigue, I've rolled well on hit points, and then I've rolled well on resolve. So normally I'd want to be increasing these stats, but let's just increase those for this time around. So he becomes a little tougher, a little fitter, and a little braver. We get to pick a pick a uh, pick a perk as well. Um, so these like these are all sort of useful. So fast adaptation, Colossus is just a straight hit points buff, crippling strikes, recover like lets you do nothing for a turn and get a bunch of fatigue back. I'm going to give him student. This is a long term investment perk. Basically, you get more experience. And that's all it does. It gives you 20% more experience. But if you get to the final level, um, you then get to pick another perk. So you basically get refunded the cost of it. So it's an investment in the soldiers surviving all the way through to the end, which is kind of cool if it pays off. If they die halfway through, well, you wasted a perk slot. And because he's moderately confident, he's not Sigurd. He's Storm, because I had that request in advance. So named after a good supporter of the channel. Um, so he's in the front line there in the middle with his spear and shield. Let's go recruit some farm boys to help him out because farm boys don't expect much in terms of pay and they tend to be relatively fit. And then we'll see if we can get a mission once we've got maybe five people on the roster, probably for our first mission. 
So Villetsheim, Villetsheim. Let's see who's available to hire here. Oh no, this is a forestry one. So we've got a whole bunch of foresters. Lumberjacks rather. Lumberjacks and butchers. So I don't know, do we want a lumberjack or do we want to go get some, some farm boys instead? Let's see what the mission here is. Thieves stole my demonic statuette. Someone will pay me 270 bucks to get back his statuette. So I'm going to accept that contract. The question is, do I want to hire a lumberjack or someone cheaper like a butcher? This butcher is really cheap and probably disposable, and I might just need numbers on this mission, so let's try him out. Uh, he's terrible. He is awful in every way. Um, I think we can do without him. I think instead we'll look at this guy because he's got a decent chest piece. I'm going to hire him sight unseen. And what I'm going to do is rack my rack my people up in order. So what I want to put do is put... So what do we got? Herman. Herman has some health. Reasonable melee attack. Alright, Herman is what he is. He's wearing a padded surcoat, and he's got this giant two-handed axe, but no shield, which is a problem. Uh, Guido here is meant to stab people with a dagger. We should probably try and get him a better weapon. Yule here, sword, and then we'll put Storm on the flank uh, as the only semi-defensible member of the team. So here's some footprints down here. We follow them. This may end up being a bad idea, but let's follow these tracks and see if we can find some people who stole... The nice local citizen's demonic statuette. There we are. There are seven thieves. There are seven of them. Can I kill seven people? Ha. Huh. Now in this game, numbers genuinely have value, especially early on, but I'm going to give this a go. Okay, interesting. So we can fight with a terrain advantage. We can fight with a terrain advantage. So what we're going to do is we're going to set ourselves up on the hills here. Now we're going to set one back. And try and force them to engage us from the low ground, which reduces their chance of hitting and increases our chance of hitting. Now when it's your turn, you can hit spacebar to wait till later in the order, which is what I did with this character here. Looks like they're trying to get around behind us, that's fine. So we're basically gambling on being able to do stuff like that and kill people before they can flank us. Now, a two-handed weapon using like this guy, he can only move one square and still swing. So if I step back one square, he can't swing next turn. And my strategy at the moment is built around not letting those two-handers cause trouble. Here, it might be worth stepping onto the low ground, probably over here in order to stop him getting flanked and take one swing at this guy up here. All right, so I want to protect this square here, so I'm going to hit this button here, spear wall, which means every time someone tries to move into a spear wall, you roll an attack roll against them, which I just did there, and it turned out fine. So the question is, do I want to step into this? I think I have to, because if I don't, I'm in serious trouble next turn. And that miss hurts. Thirty-four percent chance to hit is still better than nothing. He misses his swing too. Okay. Now we're in an interesting position. I have to engage from the low ground, essentially. And that exposes me. So I'm going to come here and attack this guy. Step in and stab the Godendag. And then step here. And he's now scared. So the little white flag means he's running away. He's scared because he's surrounded. We smacked their guy with the axe, but he didn't run. 
Oof. Okay, so we just took a really bad hit on our bloke. He's now running. Now, I could pursue the one who's running, but instead I'm going to rush to help my colleagues. I'm going to try and kill this thug here, which I do successfully. All right, now he's running. Fantastic. Hit him with an axe. And now we'll say it's over so my guy doesn't bleed to death. That just means I let the other guy run. Okay. All right. We win. Fantastic. Enemy retreated after seven rounds. Uh, Herman got lucky. Uh, we found a pickaxe, a wooden fray. We found some bucklers. We'll use those. They're shitty shields, but we'll use them. And we found the statuette on their person. So Herman here is badly injured. He's got five hit points left. Uh, but he is alive. This little 0% here means his kit is damaged, which means all your people will use tools to repair their own kit. But level up he has, so we can add 3 melee attack, we'll add 2 melee defense, that looks like it'll come in handy, and then we can go 3, 4, or 4. Uh, that's a good roll on resolve, but he's already got pretty decent resolve. I like to get everyone's resolve to 50, but for the moment, since he's a two-hander and there's a serious chance that he'll die, as a result, we'll level him up to have a little more in the way of hit points, and we'll give him student as well. Not that two-handers tend to survive particularly well, because they don't have shields or anything, um, but it is what it is. We also now have this new equipment that we can give, around, give out. Um, so giving people bucklers reduces their damage and their fatigue, uh, but does mean, and what I'll do is I'll even take Guido's dagger off him, and I'll give him this flail instead, and I'll give Hederman a dagger as a backup. You can give people backup weapons. So these shields, these shields mean that they're a little bit more defensible, a little more defensive rather, and we'll move the axe dude to the middle of the line, go back and collect our money. See, that was that was fine, no problems at all. Going 4v7, perfectly well. Uh, I didn't get lucky or anything. And uh, looks like there's another mission available here. Still Lumberjacks, I imagine. I feel like it's um, jinxing things to hire another Lumberjack. What's this one? So they're being terrorized by monsters and want me to chase them down. I'm going to say I need some time to think about this. And an event pops up. Okay, so this is an event that pops up early and you basically have to choose what your early objective is. So you basically tell the game, what are you trying to achieve? And when you achieve it, you get more renown and rewards and we get to learn more and more about new features of the game. Um, buy and sell 25 trade goods. Discover a ruin and clear it. Increase... I'm going to go trading because I'm a trade caravan. And let's go to this small village up here and see if we can find some cost-efficient farm boy recruits to get our numbers up while our people repair their kit. So you can see we need five tools to repair. We've got more than that, so people will repair their armor and their gear. We'll go to Trugan and see who we can hire here. Not really anyone promising. I mean, there's a shepherd here. I'll spend... Okay, they're nothing special. Okay, I don't like the shepherd. Um, all good. Is there anything I can buy at the marketplace? Prices are pretty high for all sorts of stuff, I presume, because disappearing villagers. So what's this What's this thing here? Hunt down what terrorizes Trogan. I need some time to think about this. Let's have a look at the squad. Um, Herman is still pretty badly wounded. But I don't know how hard the job will be. And the next village is also Lumber. Do I want to risk taking a... Uh, I'm going to think about that for a moment. So I've decided our wages are low enough that it's not worth taking a mission before we got one more person and a little bit of healing done. I'm only paying 45 crowns a day in terms of pay. So we can afford to be a little bit picky. And I'm going to fight my way... Well, not fight my way. I'm going to move over to Hoch now. 
No, two-star mission, no thank you. And if I can't find, find some uh, farm boys here, then I'm just going to start making do with whatever, because I need to be able to take missions rather than walking around the map looking for good cheap recruits. Because it's day three of the game, we've taken one mission. Alright, who's here to recruit? No farm boys. We've got some miners. Got a miller. Let's check him out. Alright, plus three fatigue recovery per turn, and he's a night owl. Hiddlebert, you're cheap, you're in. And we want to test out any of these miners, perhaps. They've got pretty terrible gear. No, we'll test out the other miller. He's asthmatic. He's out. Eskir? No traits. Um, you have no traits at all, but you fill up a slot in line, so you're in. Six, six I'm confident. Six I can do a mission with. Um, mind you, Hiddlebert doesn't even have a weapon. So what we'll do is we'll bring these guys into the middle of the line where they're a little bit more protected. And Hiddlebert, your weapon is now this pickaxe. So look at this professional bunch of trained warriors uh, in their linen tunics and damaged pickaxes. What's the mission here? All right. I'm escorting a caravan a day to the east. You know what? That's fine. I don't think anything will happen. So... Alright, so these, these jobs are much better when you're not attacked on the road, but we are attacked on the road. But here's the key thing. So we've got some donkeys and some caravan hands, you know, the people we're hired to protect, except it doesn't say we have to keep any of them alive, and if you die, you don't get paid. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull back, and we're going to form line behind the people that we have been hired to protect. I mean, we are going to synergize with our allies, and to form a cohesive combat formation. Combined arms and all that sort of stuff. Uh, in particular, we want the axe not to be at the primary point of contact. Now we wait for them to come to us. See, that guy has stepped, which means as long as no one steps into that square, Mr. Axeman, Herman, because he hasn't been renamed yet, should be able to come in here and take a swing. Okay, this is all shaping up okay. I'm actually going to step to here. And I'm considering trying to roll up the, the flank, actually. Because now I can bring Storm in to stab this guy. Let's go there. There we are. Storm makes the kill. And this guy's stunned, so we can step into this square here safely. Uh... Person in linen tunic with um, pickaxe doesn't really get to go into the front line, so I think you guys just don't do anything for the moment. Awesome job, caravan hand takes out one of them. Uh, this guy here, um, the flail special ability is it lets you use an attack which costs lots of fatigue but can only hit the head, and this guy doesn't have a helmet, which would normally make him a great lash target. But he's only wearing like a t-shirt, so it's actually not that big a prize. So I'm going to wait until someone makes base-to-base -base contact so I can make two swings in a turn. There we are. So that guy's come in. Nice job, caravan hand. Excellent. Excellent work. Uh, you act in two turns. Let's let you swing at someone before we step in. I'm going to step to here with Herman. All right, he's now acted, which means we can get in close to him just fine. Let's try and take out this guy first. Because that'll demoralize all of his friends. This guy is fleeing. Perfect. He's now fleeing. So I'm going to hope he runs away. If you try and run away when you're in base-to-base -base contact with someone else, it's a bad thing. Axe 
attacks in one turn, so we'll wait. See, he wouldn't have been in range, but now he is, so the axe person can take a go. I could be daggering this guy. We'll talk about daggers later on, but for the moment, I think we're good. Uh, he's fleeing. He is not fleeing. So let's stab him until he starts fleeing. There we are. And done. Love it. Okay, levels for you, old Storm and Guido. Perfect. Looking forward to everyone getting names. We've got a reinforced wooden flail, a wooden flail, a spear, some tools. Good, 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 good. That was a nice little bonus, actually. The spear in particular, because spears are good basic bitch weapons, better than uh, pickaxes, certainly, because they're easier to hit with and they give you shield wall, which is basically as good as having defenses. Uh, and this guy can use a wooden flail instead of his pickaxe. No, uh, a reinforced flail instead of his pickaxe. So it's at least something. We can level some people up. You old. Plus three melee attack. We'll give you plus two melee defense. And we'll give you plus three resolve. And you can have some student. Guido, plus three, plus... Yeah, I'll play, take plus two. And then uh, three, three, or three. Let's give you... I haven't picked out what you're going to be yet, but let's give you three extra health. Because at this stage, that matters a lot. And Storm. I'll take the plus two. I'll take the plus four. And I'll take the plus... Ooh, I'm tempted by this four range defense. Because this sucks. No, I'll take the three hit points for the moment. And then we'll take Gifted. Gifted basically means you get to level up your stats all over again. Fantastic. Three melee defense. Three melee skill. And do I want another four hit points, or do I want four maximum fatigue, or do I want four... I'm mean, going to hit four range defense. Um, I should put more into these, but for the moment, 16-16, using just a buckler, shaping up pretty well. Effective character, 66 melee skill, level three, not bad at all. Uh, and then Guido needs his perk, same thing as everyone else. We're going to go with students. Some of them will survive, some of them won't, and that's okay. Good mission, well... Not good mission over, but that was a nice little bonus engagement. Uh, being able to use the caravan hands gave us the numbers that we needed, but you can see combat early on can be very lethal. People aren't wearing much armor. Um, and as you can expect, only a couple of hits will we'll put someone down for the count. So there we are, 158 crowns for our trouble, plus we got to fight a battle which was easier as a result. The town is well supplied, so stuff is now a little bit cheaper than normal. So for example, we could buy some salt here, take it to a city and sell it for more, and in fact, I might even do so. There's also some cheap wooden shields here. Um, I'm hoping to steal shields from the enemy, but I'll buy I'll buy some salt, I'll buy some grain. That's most of my money gone. And maybe this time I do do the hunt down quest. And before I can decide if I'm accepting the quest or not, we get a little random event that lets some of our people get used to build instead, which gives us an extra 150 crowns. They're tired for a bit, but they're in good spirits. Um, I think I will do this mission and go kill some bugs or monsters or whatever it is. Oh, it's direwolves. It's three direwolves. So this map looks terrible. And direwolves are super mobile. So what we're going to do, because we don't want to fight them uphill, right? I'm just going to run backwards. Okay, so, Dire Wolves have no armor, but are incredibly fast, incredibly aggressive, and do lots of damage. So what we want to basically do is mess them up as badly as possible, and then we want to survive one round of attacks. Okay, we need this guy to die, basically. 50-50 chance. No. Nope. 
Oh my god, that was inc <laughs> okay. Okay. Come on. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. We're okay. So again, Hermann gets beaten almost to death. Um, but Hermann also does a great amount of damage. So does Storm and Eskir. Our only loot is an unusually large pelt. But mission accomplished nonetheless. Let's go back to Throgan, get our money. 370 crowns, and we can buy things more cheaply in town now. So I should have bought the salt later on. These tools are very cheap right now. Do I want to buy anything else? Do I want to buy... Do I want to buy a knife for 16 gold? I think I do. Uh, and do I want to buy a shield for 49? Maybe. We're going to loot lots of shields, though. That's the only thing. So I think we're okay. And we don't want to hire anyone else. So. I think it's back to Vilesheim. And then to uh, Vardalmark. And see if we can sell that salt that we bought. In order to get a little more money. Plus, Vilesheim might have a mission for us. So the original mission here is still available, which was to hunt down some creepy crawlies, which I will do. I don't see a reason not to. I think the team's up to it. We just need to protect Herman because he's um he's uh he's in pretty bad shape. So one bit of advice, even if you are recording video and your instincts tell you that you should make it as exciting as possible and take on risk quickly as possible, um, maybe don't fight direwolves immediately. Twice because this one's rushing straight for our axe person, and I feel like if I don't eliminate him quickly, he's going to murder our axe dude. And that's not even counting the massive risk to our other characters as well, because apparently we can't swing to save our life. 55% chance. Near death is not death. Ow. Ow. Alright, well, we're not dead. Let's see if we can cause morale checks here. Uh, we're going to run them down, because he's going to have to take checks as he runs. Whew. <laughs> um, okay, so we get a little bit of meat, and we're going to get a little bit of money, but there was a huge amount of risk in that job, and I am probably not going to take any more beast jobs for a while, because the loot is bad. I want to fight humans to steal their stuff, and direwolves are dangerous. Herman. Three, two, and... Four, probably. Perk gifted. I love gifted. Three, three, uh, four. A little bit of fatigue is useful. So he's now got 61 attack, nine defense. It's not very good defense, but you know, we're getting there. That's a terrible melee roll. We'll give you three more resolve, because you're currently not very brave. We'll give you four additional fatigue, because that's a decent roll. And two melee defense, I will accept. You are a student. Again, with the not very good melee attack roll. Fantastic range defense, though. And we'll give you four additional resolve, and then stop leveling your resolve for a while. All right, there we are. Solid lineup of my dudes, but no more dire wolves, please. So Vyashaim is free. This is a hunter. It would cost almost all of our money, but a hunter is a ranged character. Oh, and there's a po yeah, okay. So there's a higher level hunter too. Do I want to hire a hunter? First, let me just see how much money could I make selling stuff. I'll, if I could sell this wine, I mean, I could also get rid of the salt. So the question is, 
is the better hunter with the better gear worth it over this guy? And the problem is I don't know their traits. I'm going to spend the money. Determined. You're in. So this is now a ranged character, which means they can stand in the row behind. Uh, Gisselherr. 57 range skill, but no stars in ranged. Instead, he's got stars in range defense and fatigue. It's very odd. But I think 57 is good. I don't know the stat table in this game. 57 seems intuitively okay. Um, but it's also what we've got. So for better or worse, he is now a ranged character. We don't have much money left, but remember, we're going to go sell that salt down in Varlmark. And our squad is up to seven people. Now, most of them are like cosplaying catagens because they're wearing t-shirts. Um, they have no shields, no armor. They basically have no weapons. Do we want to go fight brigands for free? I don't, I don't think I want to go fight brigands for free. I think I want to get, get paid to fight brigands. Even though stealing their stuff is something I really want to do. All right. Ooh, ambush trade routes means things should be more expensive here. Yep, I can turn about 300 profit on the salt, which is kind of cool. Um, and I don't definitely don't want to buy anything else. And I think these militia are too dear for my heart right now. So let's have a look at these jobs. Thieves stole this guy's coin collection. Brigands at a ruin. And a delivery to Nordholtz. Where is Nordholtz? There. Okay, so there's a walking mission up to there. I think we want to go fight some brigands. I think we want to do this one, because I want to take their stuff. Okay, let's see what sort of terrain we get. We've caught them during the day, which is better for our ranged character. Let's just wait and see if they come to us. They should. I'm okay with this so far. Because I think I'm going to be able to kill that axe character. Unfortunately, my archer doesn't act until later. That'll do. So archers have this thing where they can hit the wrong person unless they're firing from immediately behind a person. So we'll shoot an arrow into this brigand thug here. And I'd love to hit this guy, but I actually think the better chance is to try and route this guy. I'm hoping for a casualty here to get them routing. Like that. Oh, he just breaks the shield. Okay. Disappointing. Okay, there's a kill. He's running. Now the Axeman's running. Uh, run them down. Let's get as much loot as we can. One of them left. There we are. Guido, Storm being Storm and the Archer being MVPs. Hey, we got some armor so we don't have to wear t-shirts anymore. Oh, and a sword and some axes. Yeah, it's great. Okay, that's a huge upgrade. That stuff is pretty trash by most standards, but by our standards, it's amazing. Because uh, we're basically just murder hobos at this point. Plus three, plus three. And what do I want next? Plus four? 
plus three plus three. Do I want four? That's a good range defense roll. Range defense is not normally something I would focus on, but um, I'm getting some very good rolls for it. Alright, these stats are starting to look a little bit better. I have no clue what I'm doing in terms of leveling. I've played a little bit of this game before, but not like a huge amount. But I'm basically thinking attack and defense good, health probably good to a point, and then fatigue probably good. What's this new mission? Caravan. Violet time. We know Violet time. Do we want to walk back to Violet time? I mean, it's just money for walking, as the great General Confusion used to say. Um, how wounded are our people? Our people are pretty... Our people could use, like, a brief a brief respite. So maybe we, maybe we take the, uh, the quick respite up north. And then either they will have spawned new missions up there, or we can just walk south again. Because our daily pay is 88. This takes a day. Small benefit. Uh, it increases our reputation with towns. That's the thing. And we're going to get to find brigand thugs with, from whom we can take loot. Um, and what I didn't do before this mission was equip all the new stuff that I stole. Cool. Go me. Uh, but let's fall back and let's try and not lose anyone because of that particular feat of laziness. Fall back into line with the caravan hands. The key is not to engage them at the base of the hill. Make them come to us. And they're going to have to because I have an archer. Oh, you idiot. That guy is going to get himself so badly murdered, it is not funny. And I am not going to go forward and attempt to bail him out. Oh, they're just ruining everything. Nice job by the archer, though. Okay, apparently we're charging the hill. Charging the hill is the thing that we have decided we are doing. You know, for caravan hands, these are some pretty brave lads. Maybe we should, if they survive, maybe we should recruit them. That was two 72% chances that actually whiffed completely. What else is new? Let's go for the wounded one. Nice. And we cannot get the axe into contact this turn. So instead we'll step up here. Jeez, these caravan hands just charging forward and like shanking them with whatever they've got on hand. They are murdering these brigands. What did they hire us for? Jeez. I am very confused by who is protecting who at this at this point. Ah, uh, well. Off goes his head. Ah. This bloke, he's wearing a t-shirt, no helmet, and he is charging these hardened brigands, and they are just 
they're just they're just going for it. I I really hope we get to hire them. I know we won't, but you know, I I would hire these people. This was us once. We were caravan hands. We were them five days ago, and I think they're far more competent than us. Archer levels up. We get four tools. We get some gambeson. We'll actually remember to equip it this time. Spear, food, things that we will actually remember to use. And let's level up our archer. <laughs> we just okay four range attack. I love it. Uh, let's grab four maximum fatigue and five initiative and student. So we're rolling sixty-one on our archer. And let's hand out some kit before I forgetting it, because it would be it would be funny if I forgot, but also not funny. Uh, so the axe guy needs the best protection because axe guys get beat up a lot. Um, we don't have any hats. That's one thing we're definitely missing. Uh, we can hand out these bucklers so that people have a little more defense. Um, we can switch out from some flails for spears because they're easier to hit with or with swords. I feel like swords are more of a good training weapon. And then Guido here, who's actually pretty good, he can hit people in the head. Uh, this padded surcoat is way better than rags, so we'll give you that padded surcoat. Uh, and this thick tunic is better than a not thick tunic, so we'll just give you that. Oh wait, no, there's a padded, there's, there's more stuff here. Padded surcoat. These are all 50 level armors. What have I got here? A 65. So we can give this guy here this. And this is what, a 35? You can have a 50. The um, number there, by the way, is just the integrity of the armor. It's basically the armor's hit points, and that's what's protecting you, plus that's also what you're repairing. And then we'll give some more people knives whenever we find them. So sword guy can get that and a knife on his belt and eventually we want everyone to have a knife on their belt do you want to issue any more spears actually i'm tempted you get a spear instead and what happens is spears on the flanks damage dealers in the middle archer hiding like a brave brave man that he is in the rear rank Awesome. Let's go to Violet's home. All right, another mission accomplished. Crowns well deserved. Does Violet's home have a mission? It does. This is find a crypt. I don't like that. I don't like missions where you go and try and find stuff because if you can't find it, then you end up feeling like an idiot and wasting all your time and money. Uh, I would love to get another hunter. This is a second archer we were looking at before, but I just, I'm pretty sure I just don't have the money. I can sell some extra shitty weapons. And this unusually large wolf pelt. Gets me 1,900 bucks, 1,900 buckaroonies. And I would have basically nothing left after hiring this guy, and I have no clue what his stats are, but hey, cool archer and irresponsible financial decision-making. So this bloke has 58 range skill, and again, no stars in ranged. His stars are in fatigue, health, and melee defense. You know, stats that you associate with a uh, archer. He's Spartan. This guy is determined. Let's level him up. At least he rolls a three straight out for his ranged, uh, his range. That's good. We'll give him four ranged defense and let's give him four hit points to start with just to keep him alive. And we'll make him a student like everyone else. Plus he gets a fancy hat, which is probably where most of the recruitment cost went. Also, is he... Yeah, they're both using hunting bows, which are actually pretty good bows. So that's clearly what you're paying for in those circumstances. Let's go back south, find a job and some money before we go bankrupt, because that'd be a great way to show off how good I am at this game, <clears throat> not uh, in episode one. Going bankrupt with a, uh, a high funds trade route start. Go me. 
So given the time scale involved, I don't think beggars can be choosers. Uh, we're going to go attack a brigand camp because otherwise we're going to run out of money. And this way, when we attack the camp, whatever loot we have should pay for our salaries until we get back to town. Guido gets struck by... Okay. <laughs> okay, so a, uh, a bird uh, lands some droppings on one of our characters. And one of our sharpshooters immediately shoots it out of the sky, which makes all of our people really happy. Nice. Well, I'm kind of glad that our company includes two awesome archers. Given that we have two archers, we're going to use this little camping stance here, just to wait until dawn. Then we're going to attack the camp, I think. Wish me luck. Some brigand thugs, brigand poacher. Bri okay, so they have an archer of their own, a raider who's a higher level brigand, and then a bunch of thugs. Let's go. All right, so here we are. It's raining. It's 8v8 in the middle of their camp. Looks like they were getting ready for dinner or something. Again, we're going to wait. Hopefully they come to us. They've got a slinger and an archer. Yeah, this see, some of them have charged forward, which is great for us. He can guard the flank. Oh, I just did a stupid thing. I stepped into his... All right, we're going to waste one of our characters, unfortunately. Nice. And then, spear wall, because that's protecting these, these squares around here. We're going to use Hilbert to protect that square, while the archers go to work. Because this area here is a dead zone. They have to... Okay, unless they get really lucky stepping into it straight out. Um, do I want to take the risk of going after the raider? I think I do. The hammer is dangerous. So removing the head of the person wielding the hammer makes the hammer considerably less dangerous. Ah, uh, well. Step inside the ranged character, which will force him to switch to a melee weapon. Do I want to keep this? There we are. Nice archery. Love the close distance archery work. Bucklers are nowhere near as good as actual shields, but for the moment they seem to be protecting me for some hits. He swapped to a club. Stabby McStab Stab. <laughs> Looks like one of them will get away, but he doesn't look like he has any good kit. Yeah, he's gone. All right, clean, quick and clean. We got some a signet ring, two shields, a cleaver, a sling staff, a 95 armor, leather lamina, a little bit of money. Like I said, the loot from a camp is probably going to pay for our salary until we get back to town. Okay. You move and find a prisoner of the brigands, ropes over his mouth. He meekly asks if you join your unit. There we are. Let's see who we've just recruited. This is Bertram. Bertram is a miner. He's tiny and he's superstitious. Tiny means you do less melee damage, but you have additional range defense and melee defense. And he's got a really good melee skill roll. He's got reasonable stats, Bertram. So Bertram's never going to do DPS, but Bertram's going to be hard to hit. So Bertram, we're definitely going to try and get some kit for in a moment. I'm going to put him there and think about it. Uh, Eskir... Uh, leveling those, obviously, and that, uh, he keeps getting really good rolls for everything. I'm going to give him four fatigue, but some hit points wouldn't hurt. Oh, good rolls again. 61. 
I'm so spoiled for choice with this guy. Let's go full fatigue again. I feel like a little range defense is good, but you also desperately need resolve. Oh, another fantastic, fantastic rolls across the board. Good melee defense. We'll skip the melee skill. We'll go four fatigue, three hit points. Can't skip melee attack forever because it is important, but for the moment, this 1916 will be good enough. And now we can get some skills. Um, Recover is good, Colossus is good, Nine Lives is good, Shield Expert is good, Brawny is good, and this is the point where you realise there are so many perks in this game and they're all really, really good. Like, I like having rotation on everyone, I like having Brawny on everyone. So the question is, what is Storm going to be? Because if he's going to be a, a sword and board kind of character, then he should get Shield Expert, but he doesn't have melee defence stars, so I don't know, he's got lots of fatigue. I don't know, I'm not going to spend that immediately because I'm not sure. Let's look at the stash. What we do know is Storm, because he's probably our most experienced character, can get an armor upgrade. And his hand-me-down armor can pass down to Bertram, who's joining the squad. Bertram can get a sword. Um, our character's at the front. We can get... People on the flanks get the shields, the proper shields which means Bertram here can have a buckler. Apparently hats are banned for half our combatants. We want to show off our luscious locks. Uh, and Bertram can join the front of the battle line. So we do something like that. There we are. Look, it's, it's not a perfect company, but it's definitely a company. Let's go back and give the good news to the people of Vardalmark. But having just looted that little bit of gold from the camp gives us maybe an extra day of payroll. 450 crowns. And let's see what they'll pay for this signet ring. 300 and whatever. That's okay. We'll sell some of these shitty flails that we don't want. I don't think we need to sell anything else right now. All right, 1,000 money, 57 food, 46 tools, 73 ammo. Uh, what was this mission? Cargo to Nordholds. I'll think think about that for a little bit because that I'm paying 123 crowns a day. Being paid 300 crowns to go two days away isn't really good money, but it's it's some money. I guess we could go all the way back to Nordholds and then walk south again, continuing to build up a reputation with these villages. And eventually, we might want to go down south to turn. Oh, I was running the clock and paying money for no reason. Uh, and the job has disappeared, because I'm a genius. All right, I guess we're going south. So, we go south to Tanweer. We don't know what's there. So let's go have a look, I guess. All right, so we're facing a Brigand Thug and some Brigand Raiders. Brigand Raiders are actually pretty scary. They've got better equipment. Um, looks like we have some terrain in our favor, so we'll engage using it, no doubt. I want to take the pike off the field as quickly as possible. I'm going to wait just for a moment. I'm going to try and bring this flank sort of in a little bit. Ah, that didn't work how I hoped. Then I'm going to shield wall. And spear wall. This guy's on the low ground, so I definitely got the advantage. So much so that I want to push down, I think. So I could engage him with the 63. I think I actually want to hit the pikeman, like that. That's a long flank attempt.
I think if I go here, that didn't work. So archers, I find, work really well against people who have basically no armor on them. There we go, fleeing, right? No, breaking. I would have liked his kit, but uh, better to be alive than to have his kit. Oh, he, the flail guy is swinging at my head because I have chest armor, but no head armor because he's intelligent. The AI is a little bit mean in this game sometimes, in that it does seem to know what it's doing. No flanking for you. No two attacks for you. Oh, I should have just removed your shield, bugger. No. Archers do not have a clear line of fire. I'm not sure I want to chance uh, my helmetless spear dude here against um, Mr. Flail until he's finished attacking. Oh, someone got hit. Someone got hit. Who was it? Bertram. Is he the one we just... I think Bertram's the one we just saved. Whoops. He's fleeing. Fantastic. Who has knives? So this guy's running away, and I want his helmet. So what you can do, once someone is running away, if you have knives, which I should give to everyone, there's an attack here called Puncture, which doesn't damage armor. It just damages health directly. So you can stab people and not damage their kit. And that means you're more likely to be able to keep it when the battle is over. And because they're surrounded, they can't go anywhere. And because they're fleeing, they can't fight back. Uh, so what I'm hoping for here is his helmet. Hermit, there we are. So Bertram, he just joined the company. So Bertram was with us for a couple of hours. Fantastic. We got some flails, like some proper flails. We did not get the fancy hat. We got a hand axe, short sword. We got the pike. All good. Okay, so I think that's a good place to stop it. That's a nice introduction to the game. We got our first person killed, you know, hazard pay and all that. We'll level our characters up a little bit, um, and I'll stop doing stuff probably at this point. Just so people can tell me what all the things that I am doing wrong, no doubt. I feel like Herman's almost got enough health to really survive as a two-hander at this point. Like, I feel... I feel like Colossus might be a thing. This is just extra 25% hit points. I feel like if you're going to be a two-hander, then maybe this is the way to go. Or nine lives, which is if you die the first time you would die, you don't. Let's give him Colossus to give him 97 hit points. Because otherwise two-handers die real easy. <clears throat> Plus three range skill. Uh, plus four fatigue. Plus four range defense, because archers do get shot at a lot. And we'll give him gifted again. Four more ranged. We'll do that. So now he has 100 initiative, 68 range skill. That's a good archer backline. Um, and I'll probably stop at this point. I have some perks to pick. I have some characters to name. So here we are. First of all, that's Battle Brothers. I hope you enjoy the concept. You take missions, you raise your characters, they all have unique traits, you get lots of random events, you run a mercenary company, you try and make money, uh, and you try not to think too much about the fact that the people that you rescue, you get killed like three hours after you say, hey, welcome to the company. Um, if you are, especially, especially if you're a patron, first priority, call dibs, get characters named. Um, if you've played this game before and I'm doing something horrible, horribly wrong, 
tell me, and then I'm not sure what I want to do. Whether I want to go back north, do we want to check out the middle of the map, do more of the original content? We want to go south, get ourselves murdered in the sands of the desert. I don't know where we're going to go next, but I thought I was asked to look at this game. It's a fun game. It is a classic. I hope you're enjoying watching. I will do a little bit more of it. I'll take your advice on board, and I will see you all again soon. Casualty 1. Bertram. Days 1. Battles 1. Kills 1. Battle Brothers in a nutshell. See you all soon.